Welcome to the Kookley Bushcraft channel. Okay, so time for another look at this little guy. This is the Rocca Corpus Autori. Right, so I did a brief overview of this knife a few months ago. I've been using it throughout the winter. Throughout the winter, it's only February. But it has been getting daily hard use. And uh, it's been holding up to it quite well. So, it's a very traditional knife in a lot of ways, actually. Well, in particular, the blade. So we've got a rhombic shape, uh, which is typical of a lot of Finnish porcos. So we've got quite a high flat grind. I won't call it a sabre grind. I won't call it a scandy grind. Certainly not a full flat grind. But yeah, it goes up to the thickest part of the blade, which is about two thirds of the way up. And it tapers a little bit towards the top. It's round about five millimeters thick. And uh, it's got a very, very, very slight secondary bevel. So this little knife has been getting really hard use every day at work. The blade steel is 80 CRV2, which is normally quite a budget friendly steel. So why is this knife so expensive? Well, a lot of it's got to be down to the selective heat treatment. So the spine is tempered to about 50 HRC on the Rockwell scale. And the edge is tempered to 63, which is extremely hard. It gives it an excellent edge retention, but it's maybe just a little bit prone to chipping. And looking at this footage, please bear in mind this knife has had a lot of extremely hard use. As if you sharpen and strop regularly, it is very easy with this knife to maintain a very sharp edge. And uh, the chipping wasn't as hard as I would have expected to remove. And I think, as if I was using the knife just for basic camp crafts, I wouldn't have had so many problems with chipping. I do think, however, I would have been happy with a softer edge and to sharpen more often and have less problems with chipping. It certainly cuts well and it keeps on cutting. And that blade geometry works fantastically well when it comes to working with wood. Both at work and also in the forest. The blade length is round about four inches, so a hundred millimeters, which makes it a really nice knife for, for smaller carving tasks. Uh, one thing, one thing I did notice is there is a little bit of a bend in the spine. Uh, let's see as if, I don't think it's really going to pick up on the camera. It's very, very minor. And I did notice this when I was battening through some birch logs. Some, yeah, like wrist thickness. Nothing, nothing naughty. Uh, I do believe that this is that it came from the manufacturer like this, uh, and that it's so slight. I didn't notice for a few months. I, uh, I don't think that's been caused by anything that I've done. I know I'm going to get comments about you shouldn't batten with a knife, uh, but yeah, I, I batten with knives quite often and uh, I have seen ma knives come from manufacturers before with a slight twist uh, there was one in my last video <laughs> well yeah I mean that, that to me is absolutely not a problem unless it has been caused by something that I've done which could mean that the uh, spine's 
not that springy and just too soft but to be honest I think it came like that right so we've got a lanyard hole and glass breaker uh, so we've got a rubberized handle that's something that's really not very traditional uh, but compared to a to a standard porco uh, you know it's got a finger guard People really worry about their fingers slipping over the blades. That's not going to happen with this. Uh, I did really have trouble <laughs> getting enough purchase on this once. Snow in the sheath. Yeah, I was doing some meat prep. I work on a husky farm. So I work with sled dogs and I was preparing the meat. And I remember having this on my belt and being unable to pull it from the sheath because I couldn't get enough grip because I had uh, grease and blood all over my hands and uh, I just reached for my halter's force which was next to it on my belt and that came out no problem but uh, yeah one one of the initial things I didn't like about this was the sheath the uh, it was really hard to get in and out and you couldn't really tell when it was in there uh, it's really loosened up and now it works fine you push on the thumb ramp it comes off push it in you get a little bit of a click so you know that it's in there and now this is quite an expensive knife and I've got <laughs> You know, three foot of snow all around me, so if I'm doing this with it, I trust that it's not going to go flying. <laughs> yeah, I'd lose it quite easily here. But yeah, the, the retention's excellent. I got the Ulti-Clip version, which... Uh, which you have to half take your belt on anyway to clip that over it. But it is quite good. For clipping to other things so like that uh, with it riding so high on the belt that's another thing that I didn't really like about the sheath uh, with it riding so high on the belt it's a bit stiff this thing that's something that I don't really like in a sheath because it interferes with my rucksack straps Oh, my rucksack belt, as if it's here, and the belt goes around here, it's, yeah. Uh, but, for the winter at least, it's been great, because I've just been clipping it onto my salopettes there. You know, I've usually got my jacket open, unless it's really, really cold. Uh, or at least semi-open, so I can easily reach in and grab it. It's a very convenient place. And also, that's easily changeable, I could come up with another option for uh, hanging it lower. Uh, I do like to have a dan dangler, especially when I'm hiking in the summer with a rucksack. So let's have a look at the belt attachment. Okay, so this is the ulti clip. Can clip onto many different things. You could maybe put it on your pocket, might not be too secure. But, you know, to molly webbing or anything like that. And uh, held on with three screws. So you want to make sure that those screws are well and truly tight. And maybe check them every so often. Uh, this fell off my belt once. And as if I'd have been on the snowmobile at the time, I wouldn't have got the knife back. So, yeah, just uh, worth checking. I've had the same issue with screws coming loose on, on Kydex sheaths too. Okay, that's that. Then inside here, Inside here, we've got a little piece of metal that uh, goes into the grooves on either side. 
so you can have it left handed or right handed I'll put that back in where it was and then we've got a malice clip and there we go that's what the malice clip looks like so both systems ride really high on your belt uh, so they're both likely to get in the way of the the belt on your rucksack but this looks like it'd be a uh, really quite good upside down on some molly webby I mean I really don't like carrying things upside down but I mean that sheet's definitely secure enough so there's a little tab there for opening it you might want a bit of assistance with some prizing device like a <laughs> like an ulti clip can't quite get my fingers in there come on it's really quite awkward maybe you just need good fingernails There we go. That's what I thought. Aha. So there appears to be uh, two different positions. Yeah, so the little tab can either clip in there or there, depending on whether you want your belt loop like that or like that. Well, it goes in nice and easy. It's a bit more challenging to actually take out. But, you know, quite, a, quite an interesting little thing. Never seen a Malice clip before, but I prefer the Ulti clip. This is the, the most expensive knife that I've ever bought. And uh, <laughs> I do think one thing is, uh, yeah, I used to play the guitar when I was a teenager. And I remember the first time I ever played a Gibson Les Paul. Uh, I was really quite disappointed that it didn't suddenly turn me into Jimmy Page and that it was just an ordinary guitar. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting it to blow me away. And uh, yeah, I mean, for the price, I am just a little bit underwhelmed with this knife. Uh, yeah. But it is a really good knife. Uh and it has got some very, very different features. And uh, it has got a drainage hole here, which uh, which is full of gunk. Maybe it's time I boiled my sheath. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean... It's expensive, it's good, it's a really nice blade. Uh, but what else can I say? This has got some features that will really, really appeal to, to a lot of people. It's a great little small utility knife. Uh, like the Sissy Porco, it was designed by, by, a, by, a, by a soldier who uh, was intending it for military purposes as well as general camp chores. This may be with camp chores more in mind. 
then the then the CC Boko, which is very much an army knife. Uh, but also, you know, it's quite stabby as well. <laughs> quite pointy on the tip with a bit of a clip point. Uh, yeah, I was saying the blade is very traditional. People think of, uh, of a finished Boko as having a straight back. Uh, that's the thing that comes predominantly from the 20th century, I think. A lot of older Finnish knives have clip points, some with upswept blades. And a lot of a lot of more modern ones have got like a little bit of a clip point with a tip that curves up so as you can <laughs> grab your coffee pot off the fire with it apparently. That's what they say. Uh, so what doubts do I have about this? I didn't like the sheath initially. I still would prefer a dangler. I can fix that and I knew it didn't have a dangler when I bought it. So, <laughs> And also a lot of people would far prefer the belt attachment that it has uh, so well what more can I say I mean it's uh, it's it's doing absolutely fine but it's, a, it's such a strange knife <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's really been through quite a bit you know it's uh, I mean, I've been using it as a utility knife at work, and uh, obviously, seeing as I normally use a Mora, it's been absolutely great having something that, something with extra edge retention and something that's uh, obviously it's. I could have could have bought fifteen Moras for the price of this, you know. So it's going to be better than a Mora. Uh, is it that good as a as a camp knife? Uh, well, you know, it's a little bit short. Uh, but as if you've got an axe, then it's perfectly long enough. Uh, um, yeah, general basic chores. It's feather sticks and, you know, whittling. As if you're a hunter, I'm sure it'd be fine for game prep. Uh, and all the things that a Finnish Poco of this size, which is more or less the standard size for a Finnish Poco, uh, is is good for. I mean, basically, it's a modern version of a Finnish Poco uh, with a much more traditional blade than a lot of the ones that are considered to be traditional. And our idea of a traditional Finnish Poco is... I think actually fairly modern, but yeah, as if you look at older ones, you get quite a lot. I mean, they've all got the fish tail on the sheath now, and they've all got the straight backs, and they all look exactly the same. Uh, the older ones all looked a bit different, <laughs> you know. Well, anyhow, those are my thoughts on the matter. Uh, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you all again soon for another Googly Bushcraft video. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.